Hello friends, welcome to risingpearl.com. We are on series 2 where we are learning about triangles. Today is episode number 10 and we are continuing our journey to understanding solving questions and problems based on basic proportionality theorem and the other two theorems we have learned about earlier. Today, this is a part 3. In webisode 8, we started part 1. Webisode 9 was part 2. And this is webisode number 10. I'm going to provide the links for all the earlier episodes here as well for your easy reference. Now friends, as we saw earlier, questions that come up on these three topics, we have to look out for which ratios are involved. Secondly, we have to keep an eye on which triangles may be involved. And lastly, but definitely not the least, is that we are always looking that if there is any line inside a triangle that is parallel to any of the sides of the triangle. Because all the three concepts, they relate to inside a triangle, line parallel to one side and how that line divides the other two sides in equal ratios. So all of these questions in which we started a couple of videos ago, we are focusing on more or less these three aspects. Now, this is the question. We were at question number two in the last webisode when I stopped the webisode because it was becoming very long. And also there is one other reason. We have solved part one of question two, right? So we have actually so far we have seen how to solve this, which we did in the last webisode. Let's clean this up now. And we will start out with the second proof. That is, how can we prove PA by PR, that is PA by PR equal to PB by PT. So friends, here one thing which is important to understand. Let's just, let's just draw these parallel lines here. Now, it is important to understand, friends, here, the ratio that you're looking at is PA divided by PR. You're not looking at PA by AR. You're looking at PA divided by PR equal to PB divided by the whole length PT. Whenever you have something like this, that is, if I look at triangle PRS, P AX is parallel to RS. So I can write the ratio as PA by AR, which is what we saw earlier, right? and then px by xs. But in this case, look at this question. I have a ratio pa, but then I have the whole length pr. If you have this, the way you're going to solve these questions are in this in this manner. So let us start out where we left off uh, in the last webisode. So what we have done, we have proved that pa divided by ar is equal to PB, PB divided by BT. This is what we proved in the last webisode. Now, what we are going to do here is we are going to add. So first of all, we, we want to prove this, right? So here I have PA by PR. So I don't need the AR, but I need the PA. So I'm going to get the PA. I'm going to rewrite this fraction. So I'm going to have basically swap the numerator denominator. And we know that if in a, in a fraction, if A by B, if this is equal to C by D for any fraction, then B by A is also equal to D by C, which is nothing but I'm taking this on that other side and this on this side. Right? So that I'm going to do the exact same thing here. I'm going to get PA on the denominator. And you will see why I'm doing that. So this will become AR divided by PA equal to, so this is also be going to become the, we are going to switch the numerator denominator here as well. We will have BT in the numerator divided by PB. So now what I'm going to do, friends, is I'm going to add 1 on both sides. Now remember, if you have a fraction like this, you can always add the same number on both sides of the equation 
without changing the equation. Similarly, you can subtract same number from both sides without changing the equation. You can multiply divide the same number on both sides of the equation without changing the equation. So why am I adding plus 1? And you will see in a moment why. So this is what we have. And now here what we will see is that denominator is PA. And this is a different friends for us because normally whenever we solve fractions like this, we always have dealt in the past with numbers. And here I have side, right, like or lengths. And I have the fraction. But uh, let's follow along. So in this case, so if you were to do LCM of this, so PA will be denominator. Numerator here will be AR. AR. Plus here you will have PA times 1, which will be PA. Similarly, on this side, denominator will be PB, PB, and then numerator here is BT, plus 1 times PB will be PB. So what implies from here is AR plus AP, AR plus AP is nothing but PR, right? So AR, which is AR, plus PA is nothing but PR. So you get PR divided by PA equal to BT plus PB. So BT is this length plus PB if you add them, you get PT, PT divided by PB, PB. So friends, again, using the same concept, if these two ratios are same, then I can actually take a reciprocal and the reciprocal will be same. So PA divided by PR. PR must be equal to PB divided by PT and which is exactly what we need to prove here. So friends, this is a special type of question where because the, the ratios are not something that you can find out by directly applying the, the theorem 2 and 3 because PA Instead of having PA by AR, we have PA by PR, right? So whenever you have this kind of question, you have to add one so that you basically start out by PA by AR, right? And then you have to add one so that you are looking to really add these two lengths. The whole point of adding one was to really get to this step because in this case, by adding 1, I'm looking to add the two lengths, which is going to give me the entire length PR. Similarly here, adding 1 helps us get to this stage where we are basically getting this entire length. Let's, friend, let's continue to look on, uh, take on some more questions. Now this is a question number 3. We have been given a figure below here. And what is given is this. Let's let's write what is given to us. DE is parallel to AC, right? So D. So we have a triangle ABC. We have been given DE. Let's find out which is DE. This is DE. So this is parallel. This side is parallel to AC. This is parallel to this side. Similarly, DF, DF, this is parallel to AE. And we need to prove BF by FE, BF by FE equal to BE by EC. So how do we do uh, this? How do we solve this question? So on the surface, friends, you will be a little surprised because all so all the four all the four measures or all the four lengths 
BF, FE, and BE and EC, they're all on the same straight line BC. So, but let's let's stick to our strategy, overall strategy, and see how we can use that to our advantage. So first, we are, what we are going to do is, I have actually intentionally faded out the line DE. I want to focus on triangle A, B, E. A, B, E. So in triangle A, B, E, what do I see? Here, what we see is that I'm trying to just fade out DE and I'm trying to highlight A, B, E. I have got DF parallel to A, E. So what does it mean? It means then this ratio BF by FE, if I take this triangle A, B, E, I can actually write D, BF by FE. In this triangle, I can write BF by FE equal to BD BD divided by DA. Why? Because friends, here DF is parallel to AE. This is given to us. It is given that DF is parallel to AE. So in triangle a, B, E, from the theorem we can write B, F by F, E. Remember, this is the left-hand side of the proof that we need to do. So I have got B, F by F, E. I am writing that in terms of B, D by D, A. Now, similarly, friends, how can we get B, E by E, C? B, E by E, C. So if you look at the other set, of lines which are parallel, we utilize the information DF and A. We still have one more piece of information, which is the side DE is parallel to AC. So what we are going to do here is this. We'll get back our initial shape. And now I have faded the line AE and DF on purpose so that you can focus on triangle A, B, C, the full triangle. So in your question, friends, during a test, you are not going to be changing the color or fading the line or making the other line more uh, bold, obviously. I'm just trying to help you focus. So by fading this, we can really focus on A, B, C triangles. So in triangle A, B, C, if you look at the whole triangle A, B, C, what we have here is DE is parallel to AC. So we can write BE this entire length because DE is parallel to AC. So BE, let's write it. So BE divided by EC is equal to BD BD divided by DA, DA. And again, why is that? Because it is given that DE, DE is parallel to AC. So if DE is parallel to AC, then in triangle ABC, ABC, from the theorem we can write that BE by EC is equal to BD by AD. If you call the first equation 1, second equation 2, it will follow that BE by FE equals BD by DA. This ratio, that is BD by DA is common in equation 1 and equation 2. So what we have, friends, is from equation 1 and equation 2, you have BF, so BF by FE 
equal to BD by DA and BD by DA is equal to BE by EC. BD by DA is equal to BE by EC. So all these ratios are equal and hence from here it follows BF by FE, BF, let us just write it the way we have to prove it. So we want to write BF by FE, BF by FE is indeed equal to BE by EC. So friends, as you can see here, even though it kind of look like all the four measures are on the same line BC, we still could very easily solve this question by keeping in mind the three simple things we talked about, right? And how step by step, so what we did, we expressed the first ratio in terms of a common ratio and then in the second triangle, we express the common ratio in terms of the, the final ratio. So this is a common theme, friends. And so very quickly, let's recap what we discussed earlier. That whenever we have these kind of questions, questions on these three concepts, theorems, we are really looking to understand clearly which ratios do we need to focus on, which triangle or triangles are involved, right? So here we first, we looked at triangle A, B, E, right? So we looked at triangle A, B, E, and then we looked at triangle A, B, C. So we should be able to understand clearly, so which ratios are involved, which triangles are involved, and we are really looking uh, for a clue like which line inside a triangle are parallel to which side of the triangle. So in the first triangle A, B, E, we used the fact A, B, E. Actually for A, B, E, we used the fact that these two lines were parallel. And in the second triangle A, B, C, we used the fact that D, E was parallel to A, C. Let us just probably show it by two double arrows. Right? So friends, all these concepts we have to keep in mind, our approach has to be something like this. Let's take probably one final example before we wrap up this uh, episode. Now, prove that a line drawn through midpoint of one side of a triangle and parallel to the other side bisects the third side. As you recall, friends, this is the single most important, if I can call that. Let us just say that it was one of the very, very, very important theorems from our last class earlier season where you have a triangle ABC and if D is a midpoint of AB and if D is parallel to, if DE is parallel to BC, then the theorem stated that AE must be equal to EC. That is E should also be the midpoint of AC. How can we prove it? So we will prove it so what are so we we have been given let us quickly write what is that we have been given we have been given ad is equal to bd because midpoint of one side so we assume that d is the midpoint ad is equal to db and what is given is de de is parallel to BC. BC. This is also given to us. Now, what is that we need to prove? To prove, we need to prove that E is midpoint or in other words, if we can say AE equal to CE, that will basically be the same thing as E is the midpoint. So friends, if you look at triangle ABC, right? If you look at triangle A B, C, what can we write? 
we know that DE is parallel to BC because which is given here. So in triangle ABC, we can write AD by BD equal to AE, AE by CE because DE is parallel to BC and from theorem we can write that. So this implies but AD by BD that is AD by BD they are both same. So this ratio is really 1. This value and this value are equal. So this ratio is equal to 1. So what you have is you have A, AE by CE AE by CE which is equal to AD by instead of BD you can write BD as AD they are both the same this value is 1 because they are both same length or from here you can say that AE is indeed equal to CE and this is what we want to prove because if AE is equal to EC that means E is the midpoint for the side AC. So friends see how simply we have proved this very very important theorem just for a reference I am going to include the link below for the actual proof that we did in our earlier season earlier class and you will see how more longer complex that proof was but using this theorem that if if you have a line parallel to the other side inside a triangle and then that line divides the other two sides in the same ratio using that theorem how simply we can prove this more uh, let us just say more complicated theorem so friends in the next video we are going to take a look at some more problems involving these three theorems